Athletes from around the world are once again flocking to Paris because of the Paralympic Games. They're set to open today. Around 4,400 athletes with disabilities, permanent injuries, and impairments will compete across 22 sports in 11 days. More than 500 medals are up for grabs. Many of the com competitions will take place in the same venues where the World Watch Olympians compete earlier this month. So for more on the games, I want to bring in Paul McAneese. He's a reporter for The Guardian. Thanks for joining us. Um, so first off, can you just sort of explain uh, uh, the selection process for the Paralympics? Because there's a specific classification system. Yes, I, I, it's a very good question you asked because it's right at the heart of what the Paralympic Games is about. The classification system is based on 10 different broad categories, eight of which relate to physical impairment. Um, and then you also have um, intellectual impairment and visual impairment people who are, uh, you know, varying degrees of blindness um, and before every Paralympic Games each athlete must undergo a classification process to assess where they fit into these categories and uh, whether they in fact uh, have the minimum criteria in order to be able to compete at the Games and then once they've done that they are then organized into individual categories within that so you can have as many as 50 different classifications within the Paralympic Games aka 50 different events Wow. And so they must, they're using the same venues, many of the same venues. Do they have to change the venues uh, to make them more accommodating? Um, some of them, no. I think uh, Roland Garros will see the wheelchair tennis. We'll see Alfie Hewitt, the US Open champion. He'll be playing there for Great Britain. Um, and, and they will carry on as was. But the, the iconic venue of the Eiffel Tower Arena, which hosted the beach volleyball during the Olympics, that's been adjusted, the sand's been taken away, a hard floor has been put in, and you'll be able to see the magicians of the Brazilian blind football team playing there, which is an incredible sight if you've never seen it before. We're also going to see um, what was the Parc Urbain, where the skateboarding BMXing was. That's going to be transformed for tonight when it will host the opening ceremony of the Games. Blind football? Something tells me that's probably at the top of your list of things to watch. What else should I be looking out for? Well, if you like mayhem, watch wheelchair rugby. It sounds like rugby, but it plays a bit like basketball. It's end to end. There's lots of physical aggro. It's it's called murder ball, and that gives you an idea of what it's like. Yes. Then there's this game called boccia. It's adapted from the French game baton, which is balls, throwing balls, locking off opponents. But it's played by some of the most physically impaired athletes in the entire games. People who can't, can't even move their heads. People who have to breathe through a tube in order to knock a ball off a runway down onto the course and, you know, uh, hit the balls in the way they want them to. It's an incredible game of strategy as well as real finesse. And it is something that will blow your mind. But I have to say, that's what you'll get from watching the Par Paralympics generally. Pretty much every event, you will see something that will make you think again about the human race. It, it is incredible. And I recommend it to all your viewers. Paul McAneese, I mean, you just, I mean, I'm sold. I'm definitely going to be watching. Thank you so much. Well, that's the point. Yeah, it's so interesting. Thank you.